Hi guys, Ray here from City Fan TV, joined by football finance expert Colin Savage and uh, Bernard from the Citizen Channel. And this is part two of our football finances video. We've already um, discussed the history of FFP, why it came in and, and everything else and what happened with City up to about 2014. In this video, we're going to look at the UEFA charges um, from a few years ago and the verdict of the Court of Arbitration for Sport and what happened there. So I'm going to bring Colin in and uh, let him go through those UEFA charges. Right. Well, yes. Yeah, so this started in um, 2018, late uh, autumn 2018, when the German paper, Der Spiegel, published a series of fairly um, explosive, seemingly, articles about how we'd um, pulled some stunts, allegedly, to get round financial fair play. And um, everything that we're going to talk about from here on relates to those articles. So, so that, that is the core. So there were things like we uh, Mancini had a side contract. There were stuff about player image rights being paid by a third party company. Um, that there was all sorts of other um, uh, sponsorships that, that, that the, of the Etihad sponsorship. Only a small part was paid by Etihad themselves, and the rest came from a, a third party, who, which was alleged to be um, Sheikh Mansour, uh, the Abu Dhabi United group. Now, um, so this rattled on for a while, and UEFA then started to investigate. And in, I think it was, well, I, I remember actually, it was Valentine's Day 2019, yep. the 14th. I, and I remember this because I was at a meeting, a, a City Matters meeting, that the, the, the 10 City Matters reps were meeting at the uh, CFA. And um, <laughs> right outside the window where we were meeting, Sergio was Sergio Aguero doing an, uh, an interview for, I think, Argentinian TV. Uh, and, and it kind of, we'd been, he'd been looking in at us uh, just before that. So, so that was quite, you know, you don't forget something like that. And then literally as we we're about to start the meeting, someone said, oh, we've been charged by UEFA. So, of course, UEFA charged us, and this went through UEFA's supposedly independent process. They had a, a, a club financial control board. Oh, God, God. It was the, Sp the Spiegel thing, is it, was it just one leak or is it different things coming? Is it, was there someone at City giving them the information? I mean, what, what brought it about? No, no, what happened was um, that this <clears throat> Portuguese guy, Rui Pinto, um, hacked into City system. Well, basically, what, what I gather, he sent an email with a, a virus or a Trojan on it, uh, and that enabled him to get access to City's emails. He downloaded about five and a half million emails, uh, and all that Spiegel could find were, uh, well, seven, and, and they stitched two of those together. So basically, it was six emails, uh, one of which was a made-up email because it was two different emails stitched together. Uh, and I remember at the time, it looked you're thinking, wow, what, you know, they've got us here, this is really bad. And when you sat down and looked at it, looked at the emails, and, and I said this at the time, they were very selective. So they only showed one side of the conversation. Uh, and, and the implication of these emails was that Abu Dhabi, United Group, Sheikh Mansour, had been funding City uh, directly in the guise of sponsorships. So, so basically money that, 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 that he could have put in as the owner into the balance sheet was actually go, going to prop up our revenue. So, um, and the more I looked at it, the more I read about it, the less less of an issue it seemed, to be honest. But UEFA uh, went out to get us, and our friend uh, Yves Leterme, the former Belgian mm -hmm. Prime Minister, um, was the head of the um, adjudicatory chamber, I think it was, or the investigatory chamber. UEFA had two chambers, the investigatory and the adjudicatory. And it was like um, one did the investigation and one did the, the kind of or the sentencing, I guess. Or, or so, so basically, the the outcome of UEFA's investigation was uh, around May 2019 was that um, we would be banned from European competition for two seasons uh, and, and fined a considerable amount. What, what, what years did the De Spiegel leaks cover? You know, the what years were we talking seasons? So, we were talking about pre basically covered pre-FFP, so from about 2010 yeah. to um, up to, uh, I think, 20, 2015, maybe 2018, the, the image rights payments, it, it, we'll talk about those 
uh, when we talk about the current charges, but it's not quite clear. Um, so I, I think it was up to 2015. So of course, some of it wasn't covered by FFP. Uh, because of, obviously the takeover happened in 2008. FFP came in in 2011. So everything 2008, 9, 10 um, wasn't covered by FFP. Sheikh Mansour could, could do whatever he liked. Um, so, so obviously these charges were quite serious. You know, two years out of, out of the Champions League would have hurt us financially. Uh, the club obviously appealed to the court for arbitration of sports, arbitration for court for arbitration in sports, to give it its proper title. Uh, and they conducted a hearing uh, in June uh, 20, 2019, wasn't it? Yeah. 2019, and of course, the, the outcome of that was we were basically cleared of all the substantive charges. Um, although you know, there are those who maintain that um, it was all time barred, it wasn't. Uh, that we got off on a technicality. Well, it's a bit like getting off a murder on the technicality that you weren't anywhere near the scene of the crime. <laughs> um, there wasn't sufficient evidence to convict us, and it was shown quite conclusively that the core part of the UEFA's case was Sheikh Mansour had funded the Etihad sponsorship. And what came out was, in fact, the Abu Dhabi state had funded the, the Etihad sponsorships using its central marketing budget. Now, it's something I said all along. I knew all along that was the outcome, which was why I was so confident that we would be cleared at the Court for Arbitration in Sport, because there was a document that, that said the Abu Dhabi Executive Council funded the Etihad sponsorship. So, and that doesn't break any rules. If they give Etihad the money, Etihad give up the money. That, that's no issue. And, and Kaz agreed. So, so obviously there was great relief. We, we you know, again, we suffered a small, was it 20 million euro fine mm -hmm. yeah. for, for non-cooperation. And again, um, again, people don't understand what that meant because we, we, we didn't, we, we took legal advice on this. You know, it wasn't that we just said, no, we're not cooperating. It was on the advice of our lawyers. And some of it was around this fruit of the poison tree, I think we talked about before, that, that the emails were stolen, basically, and therefore shouldn't be admissible in evidence. Uh, and the other part of that argument was that um, th there's rules around, you know, well-established legal rules about what uh, investigations can cover. So, so basically, they can't go fishing. Yeah. Uh, uh, can't go on a fishing expedition. And this is a, le a legal term. So if they, they've got to have good grounds to uh, have evidence. So they can't just go in and say, show us your books. We're going to go through them line by line. They've got to say, we're looking for evidence on the Etihad sponsorship or something like that. So, so there was always a, you know, there's nothing ever straightforward in law, is it? So there was always this issue about how much could they ask for? And in fact, in the CAS case, I seem to remember that the CAS criticised UEFA because it said it had asked for some stuff. Um, and City hadn't provided it, but UEFA just gave up uh, and they could have asked for it. So um, it, it, they kind of questioned why UEFA didn't um, push their case for this stuff. So it, it, that, that was partly the non-cooperation, um, but, but it, wasn't, you know, it wasn't capricious. It wasn't just City just saying, no, no, no. It was on very much on internal and external legal advice that we didn't cooperate. But of course, you know, you still get the Delaney's of this world and the, the Nick Harris's and, 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 and all, all those saying, you know, we got off on a technicality because of time barring and, um, you know, we, we were still, you know, punished by, by court for arbitration and sport. But, you know, the, the core part of the case, the central part of the case about uh, owner funding or sponsorships was found to be not proven. So with, the, with this the Spiegel thing, obviously UEFA themselves, once they get audited accounts from clubs, City, Bayern Munich, whoever it is that, that's involved, I mean, it's only this the Spiegel thing that, that prompted uh, UEFA to get involved and, and look into it. Um, so the Spiegel themselves, when this guy, did he send Trojans to all the big clubs or was it just City that he wanted to catch out in some ways? What was the reasoning behind it? We don't know. Uh, I mean, he's just been on, I think he's been found guilty in Portugal as a waiting sentence. I've not heard anything more. But uh, he was blackmailing the clubs, wasn't he? Some of the, some, well, some of the stuff he's called. 
I've heard a story that he was doing it to attack uh, a particular big agency group. So, um, you know, there are, there are big agents who o operate in the world of football, you know, the big, the big sharks, if you like, um, the big beasts. And uh, one of them um, was, was kind of the target of an attack by another group. But that's the story I've heard. So, you know, and we were collateral damage in that, but, but we don't know. You know. He's got hard disks and hard disks and hard disks of stuff. But, yeah. um, you know, someone saw an opportunity to attack us. You know, that the Cass case came out, I remember July, is it 2020 or something? Um, the verdict came out. Oh, and again, we thought, that's the end of it. You know, now we can... Fine, you know, the, uh, I, I think most of us in the know, people like me, Stefan Borson, had rubbish the Dish Spiegel stuff, and the club was certainly quite resolute in their uh, belief that they'd done nothing wrong, and, and we were proven right. And again, we thought it had gone away, but we knew the, the Premier League were investigating. But of course, again, you know, like 2014, it hadn't gone away. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for that, guys. And, uh, very soon you'll get the third part of this series where we talk about the 115 Premier League charges and uh, the Piers Morgan <laughs> sensational interview that turned out to be uh, a bit like Piers Morgan, a damp squib. We'll get on to that in a second. Thanks, guys. <laughs> 